Now, second problem of chapter 12, sample problem. But before we're going to start, now if you have noticed in the first problem, 12-1, you will notice that the way it is being computed, it's all stoichiometry. Okay? Now, the graphimetry analysis here, only the process on how to get the the mass of the residue. Okay, then everything is everything is stoichiometry. So when you say gravimetric analysis, so you have the the addition of the sample making it into a solution, or it could be an aqueous solution. Then after that, it would be uh, precipitated. So there will be the precipitate should be of known composition. Then after precipitation then on uh, filtration, then there will be washing of the precipitate, then uh, drying. So that is the process of gravimetric analysis. And the, for the computation, everything is stoichiometry. Okay. So problem 12, 2. So we have here an iron ore. So when you say ore, it's a mineral that is coming from the earth. So an iron ore was analyzed by dissolving a 1.1324 grams of the sample. Then, since that is an iron, so it is dissolved in concentrated hydrochloric acid. The resulting solution was diluted with water. And the iron tree, that is the ferric, it was uh, being precipitated as hydrous oxide. Take note, hydro, so that is filled with water. So, hydrous oxide in the form of ferric oxide with a certain amount of water by the addition of ammonia. So after it is being precipitated in the form of ferric oxide, it is being filtered. Then after that, the, the precipitate is being washed to remove, the, to remove the contaminants. And the residue, which is the ferric oxide with a certain amount of water, is being dried by heating it or ignited at a very high temperature to give the to give the residue which is a pure ferric oxide. So water is being removed once it is a being ignited to a very high temperature. And the mass of the residue in the form of ferric oxide is 0.5394 grams. Okay? Now we are going to calculate the amount of iron that is present in the ore. So it is being expressed in terms of percentage. So percent iron, where you are given the atomic mass of the iron, and the percent ferrosoferic oxide, Fe3O4, with the with the molar mass that is found in the sample. Now this substance, this is actually an ore. This is an iron ore that is commonly known as magnetite. Now, it is a form of iron ore that is black in color. Now, Fe3O4, commonly known as magnetite and chemically known as ferrosoferic oxide, while F, the Fe2O3 or the ferric oxide here at the bottom, the ferric oxide is commonly known as hematite. So that's the difference. So these are actually different forms of the oxide of iron. So let's proceed to the solution. So we have here the mass of the sample. So take note, class, as we mentioned in our PowerPoint that two data must be needed, all masses. Mass of the sample and mass of the precipitate or the residue of a known composition. So we have two data, both are masses. So mass of the sample is 1.1324 grams. This is now the mass of the dry, so that is residue dry ferric oxide, 0.5394 grams. We are going to determine the, the amount in percentage of iron that is present in the sample. And the second one is the amount of uh, magnetite, Fe3O4, that is present in the sample.
example. So if you are going to, we will start with the porting equation for letter A. So if you are going to determine the percent iron, what data must we know in order to determine the amount of iron from the sample? So since the the sample is in grams, so you must be able, your objective is to determine the amount of the iron in grams that is in the sample. So you must be able to determine the amount of iron in grams, divide this one by the mass of the sample, okay? Mass of the sample, so that is grams of sample. Then you multiply it by 100 so that you will get the percent iron in the sample so the mass of the sample is given that is 1.1324 so our objective is we must be able to know or solve the amount of the iron in grams so what we know about the data what we have so we have the the mass of the residue that is 0.5394 so from here from here, you are going to determine the amount of the iron in grams. So then, after that, everything is stoichiometry. Okay, so we'll solve the amount of iron first. So gram of iron will be equal to you. You start from the from the amount of the residue, which is 0.5394 grams. Do not forget to write the substance. So this is ferric oxide. So since we have to determine iron, then we have we know the ferric oxide. So you have to change it to to iron substance. So what just shift from one substance to another? The unit must be in moles. So again, we have the number of moles of ferric oxide. We are given the molar mass that is one five nine. So for every one mole of ferric oxide how many grams? 159 grams of ferric oxide so cancel out the grams ferric oxide so we have already moles of ferric oxide next is the iron so get the number of moles of the iron from the relationship of the iron and ferric oxide how many moles or atoms of iron that is present in one mole of ferric oxide? There are two. So two moles of iron for every one mole of iron oxide or ferric oxide. So you can cancel out this one. So the remaining unit now is moles of iron. So But we have to know the grams of iron. So using the molar mass of iron, iron is... 55. So for every one mole of iron, it has a mass of 55.847 grams of iron. Cancel the moles iron, moles iron. So the remaining unit is grams iron. Okay? So let us go. So the grams iron now will be equal to 0 0.5394, 0.5394 times 2 times 55.847 plus divide by 159. So that is 0.37. 0.7389 and just include the fifth one. So this is grams of iron. So we already have the amount of iron in grams. So we can now we can now get the percent iron. So that is equal to mass of the iron in grams. That is 0.37892 grams. Divide by the mass of the sample in grams, which is 1.1324 grams. Then you multiply this one by 100. So the percent iron now will be, if 
divide by 1.13242, that is times 100. So we have 33.46% iron. So this is now the mass of the iron in the sample. Okay, that is for letter A. Now letter B, letter B is you are going to determine the amount of hematite that is, uh, sorry, magnetite that is present in the sample. So same process with the iron. So if you will have present uh, magnetite, that is Fe3O4, that will be equal to the amount of magnetite in the sample divided by the amount of the sample times 100. Okay? So, question is, how are we going now to determine the amount of uh, magnetite? So, take note that the residue is in the form of ferric oxide. So, we will have the equation converting the ferric oxide to magnetite. Fe3O4. Now, you have to balance the equation. So, in balancing the equation here, you have to add because you have 4 oxygen, you have only 3, you cannot balance this one directly. So, we will add a certain amount of oxygen because you are going to, to burn that one. So, that is, if you will have here 3, so your iron is 6, you will have 2 here. So, that is your oxygen is 9, your oxygen here is 8, yeah, 2, that is 10, but that's only 9. So therefore, this must be 1 half only. Okay, so 1 half times, so that is 1. So 2 times 4, 8 plus 1, 9. You have here 3 times 3, 9. Iron is 3 times 2, 6. 3 times 3, 6. Balance. Okay? So you will be using this one to get the amount of uh, magnetite. So we start from so grams of magnetite will be equal to if it 3 or 4 will be equal to start from the residue which is uh, 0 0.5394 grams of ferric oxide change this one to moles like this one so you can actually get the moles of also ferric oxide para diretso na lang so you have one mole of ferric oxide is how many grams that is 159 grams of ferric oxide so you can cancel out this one so you have moles of ferric oxide so using the relationship between the ferric oxide and the magnetite so the ratio between the two is 3 is to 2. So you will have here 2 moles of magnetite, Fe3 O4, for every 3 moles of ferric oxide. Claro pa ne? Claro pa? Ferric oxide. So I'll just rewrite this one. 3 moles of Fe203. So you can cancel out this one. So what remains is the moles of magnetite. And we are going to determine the mass in grams. So make use of the molar mass of magnetite, which is 231. So for every one mole, of magnetite Fe3O4 it has a mass of 200 231.54 grams of magnetite so do the computation now 
how many grams is uh, magnetite? Point five three nine four times two times two three one point five four equals divide by one five nine times three equals it's point five point five two three six six this is grams of cancel out this one and this one grams of magnetite Fe304 that is grams of this is grams of magnetite so to solve for the percent percent magnetite that is present in the sample so mass of the magnetite which is 0.5 3.5 Two, three, six, six grams divided by the mass of the sample, which is one point one three two four grams. Then multiply it by one hundred. So divide by one point one three two four, and it is equal to around forty six point. Two four percent of magnetite. Okay, so this is now your answer. That is the amount of that is the amount of uh, magnetite in the sample. Point five two one four. Let me check on the, because in our book, the amount of, the amount of magnetite is 0 0.5214, 0 0.5214, ours is 0.52366, just check on the, if we have a rounded off sum of the value, ah, it is the, it is the molar mass of ferric oxide. I wrote only 159. It's actually 159.69 here. So just make the necessary adjustment. This one is 159.69. I wrote only 159. Same with, I think here, I wrote only 159. Okay, so just make the necessary adjustment. So this is actually only 33 point here because I use only 159 point this one. So it's actually 159.69. So just make the necessary adjustment on that value. Same with here. Here okay, just... Uh, you just change it. 0.5394 times 2 times 231.54 volts. Divide by 159.69 times 3. So it's only 0 0.5, 0 0.5214. One four. Okay, divide by one point one three two four. So that's forty six point zero four. This one is point five one four. Okay, so just make the necessary adjustment for for this one. So try to solve it again using 159.69 for the molar mass of uh, ferric oxide. Okay, so that's problem 12.2.